uh, that's for sure. So let me bring to the show our first guest this morning, Brunel Rosa, CEO Rosa Rubini Associates. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. So uh, I just wanted to kick off with presidential elections in Italy and then of course we're going to touch on um, the geopolitical crisis which weighs on markets quite a lot. Um, so what are the most likely scenarios at this point, second day of elections? Do you think there is going to be a name that is going to satisfy all political parties or most of them? Um, eventually there will be a name i'm not sure it will satisfy everybody i'm not sure it's going to come out today or tomorrow most likely it's something that will happen towards the end uh, of the week you need to see a bit more of this void uh, ballots if you want in which uh, nobody is elected because uh, political parties are trying not to burn names from either side uh, especially after berlusconi decide not to run um Clearly, the main candidate remains Mario Draghi, but Mario Draghi at Quirinale, the presidential palace, needs uh, an agreement of, uh, uh, on who's going to be the next prime minister for that to happen. Um, and that is what is stalling the negotiations between the parties now, because of course they haven't agreed on what's next. And the point is not just the prime minister name. Parties want ministries and they want large ones, Lega, PD, Cinque Stelle and so on, they all claim something and if you start negotiating on the name of ministers or the type of ministries, it's very hard to reach an agreement on the president just yet. So that's the stage of the situation right now. So according to you, best case scenario is Draghi president of the Republic, is this what you're saying? Uh, I would say is the more likely outcome at this stage, but is not uh, certain at all. Because, uh, as I said, the possibility of parties not agreeing on the next phase of Italy's political life, so who's going to be the next prime minister and so on, this disagreement might lead to a further stall, which means that there's no agreement on Draghi, and so a new name needs to be made, and perhaps parties will coalesce uh, around that name. But it's too early to say. Um, I was wondering what are the major political risks for Italy if actually the most likely scenario was about to happen, which means Draghi, president of the Republic. And do you think there is any, how can I say, qualified figure to subsidize him uh, in Palazzo Chigi? Why I'm asking this? Because there is, of course, a large majority over there and it's really, really difficult to maintain the equilibrium. So, first part of the question, clearly there's a risk that if Draghi goes to Quirinale and there's no agreement on the prime minister name and on the type of government, then parliament needs to be dissolved and then so you will enter straight into political crisis mode, potentially resulting in early elections and with a pretty uncertain outcome. That's clearly the major risk. but. It is also true that no party in, in, in Parliament at this stage wants election this year. Everybody is betting on election next year. So some form of government needs to be formed. So second part of your question, who might lead that government? There are plenty of political figures and plenty of technocratic figures that can lead that government. Starting from this current composition, it could be on the technocratic front, it could be uh, uh, Daniele Franco, the current Treasury Minister, it could be Marta Cartab, uh, the current Justice Minister. From the political front, you might think of a promotion of Dario Franceschini. From the PD, if that were to emerge as uh, the, the winner, uh, so to speak, in those negotiations, and so on. So more names can be made. The point clearly here is what kind of government is going to be. It's going to be more technocratic or more political. So if parties agree on having Draghi e Quirinale, they are very unlikely to have a pure technocratic government because that means that on the ele in the electoral year when promises need to be made and some spending needs to happen just to uh, assuage the uh, electorate, so to speak, they are not going to, parties are not going to accept to be once again under 
the um, uh, how can I say the diktats of of the technocratic figure. They want to have some leeway. So, final take uh, on this topic. I was wondering, what's the best case scenario for markets, specifically the bond market, which is extremely sensitive on that kind of issues? Best case would be, I think, Draghi at Quirinale and uh, a credible figure able to guarantee the implementation of the uh, national recovery plan at Palazzo Chigi, somebody like Daniele Franco, or you can think about the Cottarellis of the world, but even a political figure at the end of his career, such as Casini, that uh, it just wants to be prime minister for a period just before retiring, so to speak. All these solutions um, would be very much liked by the market. What the market will not like would be Draghi e Quirinale and total uncertainty on the next government or even worse, early elections with the total uncertainty on uh, the eventual outcome. All right, this is a pretty important point. We do see the spread between the tenure Italian and tenure in German Bund at 142 basis points. points. Do you think that the political situation in Italy has anything to do with this? Well, so there are two reasons behind this increase in the spread. One is structural, if you want, with the increase in the level, and I underscore once again, the level of the boom yield. Somehow, by definition, the spreads tend to increase uh, because all the risk factors tend to increase as well. Uh, but then there's something idiosyncratic to Italy, which is due to the political crisis and the political uncertainty that this is creating. And apart from the spread uh, of BTPs to Bund, uh, it is always worth looking at the spread between BTPs and Spanish bonds or Portuguese bonds, uh, because it's quite uh, incredible to some extent that the spread between uh, Italy, Spain and Portugal remains so wide, which means there is some element of credibility that the Italian institutions and the Italian government still need to uh, gain with market participants and even a, a very well respected person such as Draghi has not managed to completely convince the market about. Um, I'd like to touch on the geopolitical crisis and tensions uh, weighing on markets. We're talking about a situation in, in Ukraine specifically. Do you think that um, actually there could be, um, you know, kind of war? Kind of a war? And understood. No. Um, so I don't think either side wants a war, but either side wants to achieve something. Um, Russia wants to make sure that Ukraine doesn't fall <clears throat> within the perimeter of NATO because that would mean having NATO at the border, um, which is totally unacceptable already in the 90s when there was an, uh, the enlargement of uh, the EU to East and the Baltic countries entered the EU and eventually even the Eurozone. Russia was totally upset with that. Um, also because eventually those countries uh, became part of NATO as well. That would be something that, at this, but at the time Russia was very weak. Now it's much stronger on, uh, on the international scene, it would not accept anything like uh, that. On the other hand, uh, uh, NATO wants to make sure that Ukraine remains independent and potentially part of the European circles, either formally or informally and definitely not part of the Russian, uh, if you want, sphere of influence. The, mo the best outcome would be a Finland-type solution in which the country remains between Europe, so to speak, and, uh, and Russia, but would never become part of NATO, and, uh, um, and Russia feels reassured about that. The point is, the problem is that in international politics and in geopolitics, you don't make those kind of agreements, so to speak, uh, on paper and uh, sitting around the table. You have to show your muscles first and uh, show some threats from one side and the other, and then perhaps eventually reason comes out and agreements are made. But unfortunately, this is still the stage in which uh, 
uh, each side needs to uh, show uh, the, uh, you know show their muscles and that they are ready to to be serious uh, in whatever they are trying to achieve right so there is a still possibility of mil military altercation but uh, what is really interesting is that actually Europe is behind Ukraine ready to to answer um, violently by the way uh, and on the other side they completely depend on Russia when it comes to um, you know natural gas which is pretty yeah. important point considering the energy crunch that we are witnessing here in Europe so how do we find a balance or better how do they find find balance in that kind of situation? It's very complicated because that's always the issue when you deal with Russia. And for Germany it's even more complicated. They got this Nord Stream 2 pipeline that is about to be completed and is it virtually completed. It's just a question of opening it and making the gas flow. But there are such huge uh, geopolitical tensions around that. The US is very unhappy about that, has notified Germany that this is not an acceptable course of action uh, because it will link way too strongly Russia with, uh, with Germany. And um, But every time we speak about Russia, everybody speak about Ukraine, we know we are talking about natural gas and so on. And uh, um, And this is a card that Russia constantly plays on those uh, on those on those kind of situations so but to some extent that also helps keeping the situation in some form of equilibrium before um, escalating one way or the other because uh, Europeans don't want to accept Russia that could stop sending the gas and on the other end uh, Russia doesn't want to upset its clients, so to speak, that may stop uh, buying gas from Russia and find alternative sources. So to some extent, while being a critical point, it's also one of the possible reasons why conflicts don't happen. All right. Thank you very much. Bruno Rosa, CEO of Rosa Rubini Associates. Thank you for joining us and have a great day ahead.